Most embarrassing moment. Um, oh, um, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a corker, that one is. And video number nine. Here we go. So welcome back to another Muttley YouTube video. This is video number nine, and it's the third week of us asking Muttley members about questions that you've put together. This week we have something they would tell their teenage self and also their most embarrassing moment. Okay guys, continue watching to see the answers and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, one piece of advice for your teenage self. Oh, um, believe in yourself. I think my teenage self needed to learn to believe in themselves um, and, and sometimes take risks, yeah, believe in yourself. One piece of advice for your teenage self. <sighs> oh, I wasn't a Christian when I was a teenager. The best thing I ever did was go and join a church with lots of young people in it, lots of teenagers. I feel they got something that I wanted. Uh, and then uh, I realised at the age of 20 that uh, the thing to do is to put myself in Jesus' hands. And I did. A very wise lay pastor said, have you actually told Jesus that you want to follow him? And then just walked away. And I thought, hey, that makes sense. So I told him I wanted to follow him. And boy, oh, I've never regretted it. Yes, one piece of advice for my teenage self. When I was a teenager, I was very, very shy. I'm still quite shy. I'm still 38, um, but I was, yeah, it's really quite shy as a teenager. I probably, I could have pushed myself a little bit more. Yeah, get to know people, build friendships, push myself into social situations when it's a bit. Not uncomfortable because, yeah, you know, obviously there's a, there's a balance act. I mean, it's an act you don't want you know, to be sort of doing things I shouldn't be doing, but yeah, pushing myself to be to be more social. Thanks for being honest. Piece of advice for my teenage self. Um, I think for me personally, it would be that you you are stronger than you think you are. Um, and you can do more than you think you can and you can withstand more than you think you can. I think we don't know how strong we are until that's tested um, and, and I think when it's tested you, you realise that, that actually you can get through stuff and you, you can do more than you think um, and, and, and I think something around don't let fear be the reason be the reason for anything actually. I've, this is really a lesson that I've learned for myself around feeling afraid and feeling fear. Fear is never the right reason to either to not do something or to do something. There may be other reasons why I do or don't do those things but if actually the main reason is fear then that's not the right reason and, and I need to not let fear dominate what I do or don't do and, and it's helpful just to identify that when when fear is, is a factor in it is just to identify that and say hmm okay I can see that that's there but I'm going to put that over there and now I'm going to think through the other reasons um, about what I'm going to do or not do um, but that, those are very personal things to me really yeah the most embarrassing moment uh, yeah, okay, so I, ha I had to think, I thought quite hard about this one um, and I, I'm going to go back quite a long way. Um, um, I, when I went to university I trained as a teacher, I, I trained as a primary school teacher, that's the first thing that I did um, and in my first job um, I hadn't been at school all that long um, and I, so I was teaching at um, quite a small little village school in Devon, um, I hadn't been there all that long and um, the head teacher had taken away the, the oldest age group on a residential and had kind of left me to be responsible for the ones who hadn't gone on the residential. So I was basically in charge really. Um, and we did a 
I think it was a salt dough activity where we'd made, we'd made dough and we'd made models with the dough. And I put them in the oven in the staff room to bake as you do with salt dough. And then we all went back to the classroom. Um, and as you do, I then forgot that they were in the oven um, and it set the smoke alarm off. Um, but the thing with it being a school is that the school is directly linked to the fire station and they will automatically send a fire engine out and it was home time and they sent two fire engines um, who came into the playground just as all the parents were arriving at home time and all the parents were going, oh, is there a fire? What's happening? Is there a fire? And I had to go around saying, no, there isn't a fire. I really am that stupid that I've managed to trigger the smoke alarm. Um, and sends the entire local fire brigade um, to the school. So it just, it was, it was very embarrassing because I felt very incompetent. Um, and it was, it was about as public as it could possibly have been. This didn't happen kind of midway through the day when the parents weren't there. It was right when everybody was there. Performance, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay, this, this obviously is going to be shown to young people. So the next question's always a bit, can be a bit risky, but most embarrassing moment? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a corker, that one is. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the most embarrassing moment is because it's too embarrassing to tell you. I had one nice embarrassing moment when I was trying to explain to somebody how to pronounce a Hebrew word, and I then discovered he was a Jew. <laughs> it was his mother language. <laughs> He's like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> he had a good laugh too, but it really was quite embarrassing. Did you get it right? Uh, no, I didn't. I got it hopelessly wrong. <laughs> and, and the other embarrassing moment was the time I just... Oh, that's a bit too embarrassing. Most embarrassing moment. Most embarrassing moment. Um, I would say... I, I, I don't tend to, to remember most of my embarrassing moments, I'm trying to forget them. Um, but I think maybe using, accidentally using the ladies' toilets at the Musée d'Orsay in the Art Gallery in Paris. Um, so it wasn't really correct, sort of signed um, very well. So I accidentally ended up in the ladies. That was a bit embarrassing. I've done that trip as well, Tim, actually. <laughs> Uh, your most embarrassing moment? Oh, I can think of a few, but I don't know if you've shown to young people. Uh, I think the one that I, um, I, I don't remember it, but I think it would be really embarrassing was when we were away with the greenhouse guys in France. I don't know if you were there that year when I running down this water slide thing. Oh no. And I went right back, was whacked myself in the head and lost my memory for two days. And my earliest memory of it is, is in a hospital, not knowing where I was and why I was there, and then seeing a video of me doing this. That was very embarrassing, yeah. I'm glad you survived it. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed those answers to the questions again. I thought they were really interesting and, and some funny ones again as well. <laughs> also, uh, you may have noticed I've had a bit of a trim. It was an aid of charity, a grade two. I've never had a grade two before. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below or just laugh at me next time you see me on Zoom perhaps. But it's been good seeing you again. I hope that you have a really good week. Play lots of games next time we meet on Zoom and I'll get another video out. It'll be the last one next week of the four Ask Muttley series. So look forward to seeing you then. Okay guys, bye.